Next session, Charles Mangan is going to do leveling up in classic RPGs the easy way using the Bard's Tale as an example. Thank you. Uh, I just thought I'd show, uh, show Tony how I upgraded his uh, one of my disc twos. Um, so I know we can, I know where you can get some spare parts if you need some. We actually, I think you, did you post about the the uh, tutorial on doing that when you did that? Yeah, yeah, it's on it's on Flickr. I think. Mark, uh, Mark, uh, yeah, use Friskin Friskinick. I, 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 I said it right. He had one and we did it because I had a yeah. wall of this too. So was, I know where this is this too. So he <laughs> cool. Um, so. Let's see. So, um, in, uh, in comparison to some of the, the talks that we've had uh, already, this is going to be kind of on the, the easier end of things. Um, it doesn't involve a whole lot of hardware hacking, because it's all doing, it's all being done in an emulator. Um, there's not a lot of uh, you know, expert knowledge of the, you know, the, the Apple II internals necessary. All you need to do is be able to understand uh, text and uh, we had a great uh, session about the you know, boot tracing already, so uh, uh, hopefully you're all comfortable with zero through F being uh, just numbers, right? Everyone understand that zero zero through F is a byte. And, okay, because we're going to be editing bytes uh, with a hex editor, which is just a, a text editor that deals with uh, bytes of. <coughs> That's really all you need for, for what I'm talking about today. So if you want to recreate this with your own favorite um, role-playing game or other kind of game, uh, you can do it for nothing virtually because um, the, the, the tools are all free and really available for whatever platform you have to be running. So, um, so many moons and many campfires ago, I was a young boy and. I had uh, a goal to complete some of these, uh, some of the games um, that uh, there were adventure games, uh, role-playing games, RPGs. That's so, that, so if you don't understand what RPG, it's, it's role-playing games like a Dungeons and Dragons, a, you know, a, um, you know, a quest type game. Um, and uh, the the typical procedure was you, know, you create your party or your character, you go exploring with your level one character. And then you die. And then you create a new character. You maybe level up once or twice, and then you get to a slightly harder monster, and then you die again. And you repeat this over and over again. And you know, when you're ten, you have almost unlimited time and, and uh, free time to, to do this. And um, you, you can go a long ways, and eventually you get to the point where you're good at this game and whatever. But now, as as an adult, I have very little free time. But I still want to play these games. I want to get to the good part where you get to the good monsters and you get to the, you know, you save the save the princess, you complete the quest, whatever, without going through all of this you get killed by monsters part. So, you know, I, I wanted to avoid this your party has expired screen and just go right to the good part where, you know, you level up and you create and you kill the monsters. So what I've added to the process is once you save the game, because it's on a disc image, you can go in and edit the game or edit the same game, um, just as if it were a text file. Um, and then through that, level up. And because you've leveled up, you can kill all the monsters, complete the quest without having to go through all of the tedium of the role-playing game genre, which is you know, building experience points and gathering gold and then buying better weapons and so on. So this is, you know, this is your, your uh, level one party. You just went out into the, or level two, I guess, just going out into the wilderness, you've got a little bit of gold, a little bit of experience, you haven't leveled up much. Um, uh, after going through the process that I'm going to demonstrate in just a minute, this is what you'll look like. Um, <laughs> you should have a little bit more gold, but the main thing is that you'll be, you know, you'll have a few, a few more hit points and uh, a, a few more, um, yeah, a little bit better uh, stamina and whatnot. So again, before, after. Uh, so this is again. This is Bard's Tale, and I'm going to show you Bard's Tale. Um, this uh, specific format is for, will actually work with any of the Bard's Tale, Bard's Tale one, two, and three, and I think even some of the 
the character is going to be exported from there to I don't know if it's wizardry or might and magic or uh, there's a whole there's a whole bunch of them that you can actually export and import characters between. So once you do it in one format, you can then export your super group to uh, another um, uh, another game of your choice, um, or use the same techniques for a different game. Just you know, the, obviously the, the locations on the disk are going to be different and the, the formats going to be different. So what you need. Uh, I'm doing this with an emulator. You could do it with original hardware and original disks, but you're going to be doing a lot of floppy swapping, and there's going to be a lot of uh, going into the sector editor and looking for addresses and whatnot. So to make it faster and easier for myself, I just went ahead and said, I'm going to do it with the emulator, and when I'm done, I can always write it out to a disk and play it on the original hardware. Um, I'm using a hex editor called HexEdit. Um, there are some great ones for, uh, for OS X. There's, you know, a zillion for Windows and Linux. It's just look for hex editor and your OS of choice, and uh, there's plenty of free and freeware and shareware options. Uh, because again, it's a very simple program. Um, all it has to do is read in hex and show it to you. Uh, and so now I'm going to give you a quick demo. Bear with me one moment. Boot up Bard's Tale. So this is, if you haven't seen it, this is virtual too. I'm sure you all are familiar with the emulators. Yeah, and this is the crack screen. <laughs> Must be <Wonder. weird>. <laughs> yeah. Thanks to the Griffin and whoever else made this available. An actual Griffin. <laughs> so this is the intro to Bard's Tale. And what we'll do is... Any reason you're running a green screen? Oh, I can I can run it in color. It's just the color just kind of it's not as it's not as legible. Characters are not legible um, for me. I, and I what I had was the, the green screen, so that's that's why I'm running it. It's nostalgic for you. It's nostalgic for me because I, I only had the, the green monitor, but um, you can uh, you can squint and make whatever color you want. So when it gets done loading, it asks you for the character disk, and that's where we're going to be doing our magic. Is on the character disk. You notice I've got I've got before and after. So I'm going to load before here and press A key. So start the game and as it loads from disk. Emulated virtual um, disk drive time. So what we'll do uh, in this game is add a member and there's there's a team already created. This is the disk image that's just downloaded from the Asimov site or one of the other mirror sites that has um, you know, disk images in a zip format. Uh, you download them, and there's a there's a, a group or a party already created called the A Team, and it loads them in. And so here's here's Brian the Fist. If I pull him up, so there's his. This is how he starts out. He has. 31 gold, uh, a couple levels of experience, and um, you can see his his, um, his equipment list has some has some weapons and armor and whatnot. Um, he's a he's a nice guy, red beard and blue armor and whatnot. Um, but I got the These are being put in green. So with this party, we are going to. Head out into the wilderness, and what we should do, we should be able to do anyway, is see at some point a random encounter will come up. If I just increase the speed, one will come up a lot faster. This is the unfortunate nature of the random encounter, is that one is not randomly available right now. If you break into houses, you sometimes run into one too. Oh, true. So, so that's the, the picture. So, exit the hills, go next door. So every time I played this game, as soon as I left the Adventurer's Guild, I got attacked. Not 
Okay. Here we go. Okay. okay. Seven hobgoblins. This is going to be an entertaining fight. Um, so I'm going to choose to fight. And then I'm going to attack my uh, attack and defend. Yes. So they're doing doing various levels of damage to the hobgoblins. And then I can speed this up. And the uh, the fight will go on a whole lot faster. So now El Cid is unfortunately dead. Bring the fist is on the verge. Yeah. And now most of my party's dead. Alright, we escaped. So apparently Merlin and Omar are some real badasses here. Um, because the fight they're they're the magicians and the no we're gonna run. <laughs> I don't need any magicians and conjurers coming after me. We're gonna run. Um, so we're gonna go back into the adventurer's guild. Exactly. You couldn't find a random encounter until you're almost dead. Until yeah, until my guys are dead, then boom, they come right up on me. That's how it works. That's random. Um, so what we'll do is um, we'll go to disc options and then we'll go ahead and save the party. Uh, we want to leave the game. We're going to hit return, save all the characters, end game. So now all of my, all of my characters are now permanently dead. <laughs> yes, they are not just merely dead, they are really quite completely dead. Um, so here is Hex Edit, it of course has the, uh, the fun. Uh, Pentagram icon. Um, so what we what we can see here is rename this to after because we just went on an adventure and now we're after the adventure. Um, and I will uh, unzip another four disc. So what we'll look here look in here. Is the character disc. What you can see in this listing is a whole bunch of X. And if you look over here, this is this is basically the ASCII representation of the hex that's over here. And it's just there's a bunch of garbage and then a bunch of nothing, and then a bunch of garbage, garbage, garbage. Looks like some slightly more formatted garbage, but there's no strings. You can't look at it and say, oh, there's Brian the Fist, there's a there's a Marlon. No. Um, so you have to do a little bit more digging in this case. Um, but I happen to know where some of the values are. Um, I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. But this is the this disk image is the before image. So this is as it came down from Asimov before I made any, before I went out adventuring. So these characters are all at level two, they're all still alive, they have a certain number of experience points and gold. If I go and open up the after disc, it looks the same, but there's gonna be some differences. So what I can do with hex edit anyway, is compare the two files. So I'll compare before and after, and it should show me the differences. So here is something that's encoded. Let's zoom in so we can see better. These bytes are hello of 300. This is before. And then if I go down to after, they're 30908. So something happened there. So it looks like something was either 300 or maybe it's just 30. And then after it's either 30,908 or 398. So what before?
we're going back to before so we can see what we've got to work with. Doing this a little bit out of order, but you get the idea. So now we've got character disk, and we'll uh, add the A team again. Next line, of course. And we'll look here, we've got some of these hit points is 30. Maybe that's where our 30 came from, but he didn't end up with 398 hit points and he was dead. So let's look at our characters here. Uh, his experience was 2030. Doesn't sound quite right. Well, actually, in, in this case, you don't have to convert to next. <laughs> this is this that's the funny thing. Um, uh, so all these guys have. 2030 experience, well that's kind of convenient that they all started out that way. So maybe if we go into our um, into our character disc after going a lot faster because I've cranked it up to 11 here on the speed. So let's look at Omar. Oh look, his experience went from 2030 to 2398. Does that look familiar? Yeah. So here we go with our text editor again. We'll compare our before and after disks. So here is before again. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's 2398 versus 2030. In this case, this is a string of characters, of digits that's not in hex. Why that's not in hex, but for instance, I happen to know that this guy's name is right here in hex. This is M E R. I think this is probably Merlin. Um, but that's not straight up hex to ASCII, that's actually high ASCII. So, it's a long story, you have to. Convert blah, blah, blah. But the the ultimate point here is that these guys all started out with 2030 experience points, and now they have 2398. So now I know where experience points are in my file, and they all ended up with the same amount because it keeps showing up this 030 to 398 difference it keeps showing up various places in the file. And if I keep finding more differences, uh, what else What else changed? Uh, some of them are dead now. So somewhere along here, maybe this byte means dead versus alive. Uh, they also, when they won the fight, they got some gold. So somewhere, along, somewhere in these changes is how much gold they have. And they probably also found some treasure. So somewhere in here is treasure that they picked up. And that goes into their inventory. So those are the things that we know have changed. Sorry? Hit points, yes. Well, yeah, the, the dead guys have zero hit points versus government. Thank you. Um, so we know what's changed because we went on an adventure and, and things changed, people died. So somewhere in amongst these differences between these files is 
character alive versus dead, gold experience. Um, but it just so happens that we found a really easy one to test because it's something that we can actually read. Hey, that looks like 2030 and 2398. So let's go into our let's go back into our before disk because since we already had a bunch of guys die, let's just go ahead and make our uh, our um, our before disk our edit disk. And so we can go into uh, this point here, and let's replace the two of three with. And I know this isn't going to work, but nine 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 nine. So hey, he started out with very little gold. Now he's got ninety nine million or whatever. Um, but that doesn't look like the format from what we started with. It was O two O three. So the zero had a leading zero. For so let's go back and change that to make it look like the original format of 0909. Um, I'm kind of speeding through the, uh, the trial and error phase so I can get to questions and, and stuff because um, I don't want to run over too much. Um, so now this character, whoever he is, now has 9999 in what we believe is gold. And we haven't messed with anything else. So let's load this back up and see what changed in the game after we changed something in the file. You get to see the leather boot screen again. This is the one that we just added in gold to. So game start the game, add members of the A team, and I think it was probably Merlin. Yeah, click. Suddenly Merlin, not only is a badass magician with some fast hands, his experience level went to 99.99. Cool. So in our in our notes, we can look up where this guy is in the Text editor. We can actually go search for 999. Nice. Um, and say, okay, here is where. Sorry, my zoom in. Looking at the hex right now, this looks like a divider for a start or end for a file or for a, for a character. And this looks like another one. This looks like another one. He's got all these pads of F -F -F -F, zero, zero, zero. So it looks like from here to here is one record. It could be beginning above or, or below. But it looks like there's a record here, a record here. We know that this part of the record is gold. There's a bunch of padded zeros here. How much gold can we add? <laughs> that was experience. Oh, sorry, this is experience, not gold. I haven't gotten gold yet. But anyhow, <laughs> experience points, which is the main thing you want in a, an adventure game, aside from gold, because gold you can use to buy stuff. But experience, you level up, you get better stats, and you can use better weapons and learn more spells. Than that. There's all these. Zeros here. I wonder how far up we can go with experience. Fill that in. And what else is down here? Well, there's this 14. Happens to be maybe maybe that's hit points. Um, maybe these hex numbers mean something. If you translate them into um, into ASCII or into uh, digital. Um, so it's a matter of Digging into the records, say, okay, I found found what looks like a record, and now I'm going to go start changing changing values. Trial and error. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you know what. If I change this, the character is suddenly dead. 
Or if I change this value, the character suddenly is, uh, instead of level one, maybe he's level, you know, put FF in there, he's level 250 something, 255, 256. Um, so trial and error, you go in, you just make an edit, and see what, uh, what breaks the game. And because you're using an emulator, you're not doing any real harm. Uh, and you're using a disk image, so you're not messing up your original. Um, and so, process started. Going in, finding where gold is, where experience is, where hit points, that kind of thing is. And then with a little bit of investigative skills and some time, I happen to have found out, okay, this is where the guy's name is encoded. Because I went in and changed these characters and the guy's name got all screwed up. So, oh, so here's his name, but it's not in ASCII, it's in, and the little bit more digging, it's actually in high ASCII. So it's it's the 255 character ASCII set plus 128. So if you take the, the high bit off or whatever, it becomes ASCII. So you have to translate it or find a, a lookup table. And this becomes Brian space the uh, space fist padding padding. Uh, this is all experience. So you can give a character up to nine kilojillion experience, up to nine kilojillion gold. But this one is this section. A lot of these aren't packs. These are padding digit, padding digit, padding digit of a string of digits. The statistics for a character are in hex. Change one, change a digit here, and it's actually changing more than you know. It's not. It doesn't have four B, which is somebody can do the hex real quick. Yeah. He doesn't have 75 um, yeah. hit points or, or charisma. It's a, it's a weird conversion of the statistics. I still haven't figured that one out yet. But um, there's his, his character level, his hit points, and all this stuff is his inventory. And it's, this is all just from trial and error of digging through. I make a change in the character, I fire it up, see what happens to the character in the game. And uh, eventually you get to. You know, you get to the point where you can see it in the hex that this guy is, you know, doesn't have any gold or experience. Um, he's a level, you know, uh, level one character with, you know, some just like two things in his inventory. But that's just like, again, from trial and error. Um, as I was discussing this online and with uh, some of the other folks on the mailing list, uh, I mentioned making maybe making a uh, making a program to go in and make those edits for us. You know, open up a, a character editor. Um, but it turns out somebody already did that. <laughs> um, <laughs> in the computist issue number thirty-six, someone has given us. The keys to the Bart's dressing room, and in his uh, in his article is the basic program listing for an application that goes in and does what I was doing with the hex editor in a basic program. So uh, everything everything we've done. Everything I do has been done before, and obviously someone did it 25 years ago. Uh, to the point where he even has a listing of what is in each bit of, it's hard to read here because it's a scan, but each bit and byte of the character's record on that character disk. So, um, um, already, I've already forgotten, I just looked it up before I started, but uh, the guy that sent this scanned to me, 
your thing? You may not yeah. actually have made it. Me. Was that you? Yeah. So I was thinking, hey, we'll do something for Hackdust. We'll actually write a, a program to to edit characters for the Bard's Tale. But obviously, it's already been done. So I said, do it here. Have the uh, <laughs> have the the basic uh, um, knowledge of how to do it, and you can do it in a hex editor. And if you want to, you can type in the basic code from the computer station over there. It should work on any game that saves its saves its stuff in a format that you can then read somehow. If it's not encrypted or you know have some kind of uh, actually what what uh, one thing that stumped me when I was digging into this is this last character or this last fight of each character changed every time I ran in ran the game, and it's a checksum. So if you run into something where the, the save game has a checksum, or some other means of authenticating that hasn't been messed with with a sector editor, then you may be screwed or you may have to dig in and find out how that how that checksum works. Um, so the people who tracked it probably disabled that? Probably, or they disabled it in some, in some fashion for the copy protection, but maybe not for editing characters. Um, the funny thing is that there's a bug in the Bard's Tale that lets you load a character with a bad checksum if he's part of the party, but you can't load him individually. So the checksum is bypassed if he's part of the party. So there's there's that kind of stuff. And again, that's just something that comes up in digging into computers magazine or old mail and form, mail and form, that kind of stuff. Um, so that technique should work for any kind of saved file that you can get access to. You make a change in the game, you compare it to the file before and after, or you do the other way around, you open up the file, make a change, see what happens in the game, and you, with a, with an emulator, you can go back and forth a lot more quickly than you could um, with, a, you know, with, with real hardware, because you'd have to reboot and wait for this, and yada yada, and then the more times you read and write that disk, the more likely it is you're going to end up messing, with, messing up your original disk or having it. So, um, that's why I went ahead and stuck with an emulator rather than trying to uh, do this on my my GS or my two. Yeah. So I, I just got a comment uh, about you already touched on the fact that they do store things differently. Sometimes it's a hex. Sometimes it's actually just a decimal digit stored in each byte. Right. I was. Uh, it could be stored as hex. It could be stored as ASCII. It could be stored as binary coded decimal. It could be. Uh, they could take letters and subtract like 65 from them mm -hmm. and have all the letters going from 1 to 26 instead, right? There's all sorts of things that they can yeah, do just to make it a little to, more difficult to find. Yeah, there's all sorts of ways to obfuscate yeah. that stuff. Um, but once you have made a change to a byte and seen, <laughs> seen the effect of it, yeah. you can pretty much figure out, okay, I made this change, I incremented it by 1, but over here it incremented by 10. So that must be the tens column of this decimal digit. Or I change it from 0, 0 to FF, or from 0 to 1, the character went from alive to dead, or from yeah, bit a, fields is another or thing from one, yeah. a wizard to a fighter. So those kinds of those kinds of changes, it's, it's um, there's no general rule that I've found. I've done this with a couple of different kinds of games. Um, and in some places, I was able to just open it up and see the character, like, you know, the words or the strings translated right into ASCII. And in other cases, it was just, I, I couldn't find any pattern, um, in part because I may have been looking at bitmaps, because you know, I was looking at the image of the of the character in, in the code somewhere, so it just, it was all gullible. And you can actually take all this stuff too, all this, the same um, technique, mm -hmm. and using emulators that have debuggers, right. find all that information in memory as well, and yeah, play with them there. That's the, that is, that is leveling up from what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I'm uh, I'm a uh, first time Kansas fester, and I'm very much a uh, um, a noob when it comes to these sorts of debugging and, and boot tracing and all that kind of stuff. So I've uh, given you a the thirty thousand foot overview. Are there any other questions? Anything people would like to ask? So did did you uh, in any of your exploits try? I mean, did you name characters a certain way so that the pattern would become? More obvious. Yeah, I changed. Um, I tried to change a, a character's name to uh, all zeros, and then I found that pattern in the um, in the, the editor, and that was okay. It's not. 
it's not zero, 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 it's it's whatever ASCII zero bits plus eight. And then it became more apparent that all of the strings were encoded in high ASCII. And then after that, actually, I can I can show you what um, came with that. Um, translated the the whole the whole hex listing into you know from high ASCII to low ASCII and we'll look here, there's there's strings that I can read now. There's the bard's tail. And a bunch of padding. Bunch of padding and oh look, there's my character named Fang. <laughs> Berlin. Omar. Omar. And then a little further down there's things like names of places in the town, there's the names of um, I'm not seeing any other right now. Yeah, here. Um, items. Blades, and power staff, and specter snare, and all of these are strings that are used in the game. So if you want to, you can go in and change, you know, this, you know, uh, wizard wand to be whatever you want it to be, as long as it has the same number of characters, because it's looking for that address, that those bytes when it's loading that string in the game. Um, and then with that, it's like you know you can you find okay these are these are all the different possible weapons and armor and place names and spells and you know things start to make a lot more sense when you uh, again if you change those things load it up on the screen and instead of casting you know fireball he's he's casting Kansas vest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, can, you can tell that hey, also there's that's where that that's where that change happened in the game. There could be any spell. So if anybody's interested, and and I'm sure you are, um, I've got all of my various researched bits and pieces in uh, in a file that I can just uh, that I can show. Um, that I can put online or I can put on the server. So here's, for instance, here's here's the ad, here's the, the list for all of the different kinds of weapons and armor and the might that you need, the hex that you need to put into the inventory section of a character to give him leather armor and staff and torch. And again, this is all just from digging through that hex file and making changes and saying, okay, this in that listing it says torch lamp brought sword, torch sword. So, if I give someone if I give someone uh, zero one or zero A or zero B in his inventory, what does he show up with when I when I look up his inventory? Suddenly so he has a broadsword that he didn't have. So I'm just doing a doing a, um, a quick uh, trial and error and, and discovering all this stuff. But again, you know, the computer's magazine that 25 years ago. But you can do the same with something that maybe hasn't been done. Might and magic or whispery too. Silver and castle. Or, yeah. Uh, what was the program you were using on the Mac to, to uh, compare the hex edit? Oh, to compare the two. Um, it's called hex edit. It's actually something from that has been around since System 7. And they've just updated and updated and updated. Um, and uh, it, it does a great job. I mean, you can compare any file. Any other file, right? You can open up the, and you can open up a file, and if it has if it has strings encoded in it, it's on the right side. You can see the address here. So if you have a if you have a listing of something that you know you want to you want to do a, a find a place on, or you want to see if there's strings encoded in this disk image that would give you an idea of what it is. You've got some mystery thing that won't boot up in the in your emulator, and you you, you know, want to know what it is. That's uh. It's it's faster and less destructive than a sector editor on uh, you know, on a two eight. Thank you. Thanks.